Hi, Mrs. Allen's class. It's me, Miss Danielson, the art teacher. And I'm here because today we're going to do a new project. And again, it's based on the theme that you're learning about in class. Um, and every time you have a theme, I feel like I learn a lot. So um, today is no exception. I'm going to learn while I teach you. So let's get started. Remember, this is repeat after me. So I will say a line and then you say it and it's okay to say it out loud. But if you can't say it out loud, you have to say it silently in your head. Here we go. I am an artist. I am a creator of ideas and a solver of problems. Sometimes the problems are on my paper. Sometimes they are with my neighbor. Sometimes they are inside of myself. But I know I can solve problems because mistakes are opportunities to learn and grow. And I am proud to be an artist. All right. I bet you already know what we're going to learn about today because you've been learning about it. Bats. But we're going to learn about bats in art, which I thought, I don't think I've ever seen a bat in art. How silly. There are a lot of bats in art. So this painting is done by a paint, uh, an artist named Vincent Van Gogh. You maybe have seen this picture before. It's very popular. It's called Starry Night. And I thought I knew everything there was to know about Vincent Van Gogh. I have been to see so many of his displays um, when they've come to Seattle. And even last winter, I went to the country where he was born, called the Netherlands. And I went to two museums that have the most Van Gogh art in the whole wide world. One of them is the Vincent Van Gogh Museum. And I can't believe it. But I've never seen this before. It's a painting by Van Gogh and it is called The Bat. Oh my goodness, look at the wings. They are stretched out really far. Without those wings, a bat's head kind of almost looks like a little bear, doesn't it? It's kind of cute. Well, as I was looking around for more bat art, I saw this sculpture. And remember, we talked about this last week with the spiders. A sculpture is a work of art that you can go all the way around. So this little bat sculpture um, is from Mexico, from the Mayan Indians. And they have a bat god called, oh, I'm going to mess up how to say this, Kamazots. Isn't it interesting? It looks like a warrior, like it's wearing like a warrior necklace and warrior belt. It's kind of like a part human, part bat. Very interesting. Uh, this bowl, which has a bat painted on it, is from New Mexico, the state in the United States, New Mexico, from the Mimbris region. I just went to New Mexico, let's see, a year ago. I've never heard of the Mimbris region. Anyway, you can see the cool designs that are painted on this. And then there's the bat in the center with designs even on its wings. It's called a long-eared bat bowl. Does he have long ears? Oh, I can't see that well. And then far across the world in the country of China, this vase was found. It's thousands of years old. It's very beautiful. It's very delicate. It sits on a wood base. And it has blue clouds painted on it. But if you see the orange or the kind of reddish orange figures, those are bats. Now this I found very interesting. In the United States, 
we oftentimes think about bats as being like dark or dangerous, maybe something to be afraid of. But in Chinese culture, bats are perceived as beautiful animals. And they are strongly associated with happiness. And um, the Chinese word for bat, it actually sounds very close to their word for happiness. And if they say that if you see five bats together, it's also a sign of prosper. That means like you're going to get something, like whether it's a bunch of money or a bunch of stuff, like good things are going to happen when you see five bats together. Um, here's a painting. I don't know Richard Doyle. I've never heard of him before. I just thought this was a very cool painting. It's called The Night of Bats and Elves. And you can see that each bat has a tiny little elf on the on its back. And they're flying through the air. Where are they going? Where do you think? Somewhere fun? This is a cool painting, very different. This is called Splatterbat. And I don't know the artist Christy Bruna, but I have a guess on how she made it. I think she took a straw and got a little bit of black paint and then blew the paint out of the straw and it hit the paper and splattered. And then I think she took a marker or a paintbrush and connected those splats to create splatter wrap. Kind of fun. All right, today we're gonna learn two ways to draw a bat. And I will show you <coughs> right now. Oh, excuse me, I got a tickle. A bat tickle. Okay, so the first way is going to involve a lot of circles and curvy lines. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to switch over and see if it works. I've never done this before. <gasps> yes, it worked. I'm on the document camera. I want it to focus. There we go. So we're going to learn how to draw bats two different ways. I would recommend to you that you have a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, I'm going to use a marker though so that you can see better. Sometimes when I draw on the um, overhead, I mean, not the overhead. Boy, you guys, you don't even know what an overhead is. That's like from when I was little. And that is 100 years ago. Anyway, when you draw on the document camera, sometimes you can't see pencil lines very easily. So a marker is better. So the picture I just showed you with the steps, I will leave that in the slideshow and you can click through if you want to. Um, or if you have a pencil and a piece of paper ready to go nearby, or this would work. It's my whiteboard. If you have your whiteboard nearby, that would work too. In fact, why didn't I use my whiteboard? Oh, well, here we go. Make sure you can see what I'm drawing. We're going to start with two circles and they touch. If we turned it sideways, it would look like the number eight. Two circles that touch. They don't have to be perfect circles. Inside those circles, you're going to put two dots. These are the eyes of the bat. And now we're going to draw a circle, one circle around both. So if you watch what I just did, I like to practice in the air first to kind of let my hand warm up. Look at that little bat. And then two triangles for ears, but they don't have to be perfect straight pokey triangles. If you want to make them a little round, you can. I feel like we're drawing a pig right now. My ears look more like pig ears, although I have seen that on a bat 
where their ears look kind of like piggy ears. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that pig face by putting in a smile. And even though it's a smiley bat, it's got sharp teeth. Well, it looks cute. Looks like a happy bat. And then underneath it, we're going to draw like a big giant letter U for its body. Now, this depends on how chubby you want your bat. If you want it skinnier, your letter U would be skinnier. If you want it chubbier, then you make it more rounded. I'm going to go with a chubby bat. How's your bat looking? Pretty cute. Okay, now I'm calling this the shoulders. It's right in that space, right where the head and the body touch each other. So where it kind of comes in, you're going to take and draw a curved line that sticks out from that. Oops, can you see it all? There it goes, under my head there, isn't it? And then we'll repeat that on the other side. Do you know what those are going to be? Boy, we could have drawn a spider right now, couldn't we? It looks like the start of a spider. Nope, these are our bat wings. These are our bat wings. Now, if I think back to that Vincent Van Gogh painting and you were looking at the lines inside the wing because they're kind of transparent or see-through, that's this part. So it's a curved line, um, kind of like the bottom of an umbrella or around a cloud. Sometimes I will mark where I want them to be. So maybe I put a dot right there and a dot right here and then the dot right there. Then all I have to think about is connecting my dots with curves. Dot with the curve, dot with the curve. That worked out. So what did we do again? We looked at our space and we drew a dot and a dot. There's about two fingers between those dots for me. Depends on how big your bat is. And then connect with a curve line. Connect with a curve line. Connect with a curve line. Ooh, it's so cute. Now we could add, this is not in the directions, but I was just thinking about Vincent Van Gogh's where he added those, the, oopsie, I messed that up, the lines. Oh, I messed up both. Oh my goodness, you guys. All right, I'm gonna hide that mistake. It's still not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be going into the curve, but this is a good lesson for you. By thickening my line, I'm hiding where the line went, where it was not supposed to. See, nobody would ever know. But now I have to do it over here, too. So it looks like I did it on purpose. Otherwise, they'll be suspicious and they'll know something's up. Why don't you only do it on one wing? All right, that's a good secret. Good secret trick. I do it a lot. All right, last but not least, we will put those legs on there. Now, in the picture, there's not a lot of detail to the legs. They're just lines. And I got to tell you, this is my favorite part about this picture, is the artist actually turns the whole paper upside down ah, and then makes it look like it's hanging there. So cute. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could add a branch. But now we're just adding details and details and details. And you could add it. Don't they have like talons that kind of grab hold? You know this. Tell me more about your bats, you guys. How do they grab hold of things to hang upside down? Do they have like bird claws, talons? I guess I still have more to learn, don't I? 
There's bat number one. Pretty cute. Okay, bat number two is really silly. It's got a very different shaped head. So I am going to move my paper over so that I have more room. Although this bat took up a ton of space. So this next one is going to be kind of small. But I have to keep in mind it's going to have wings. So, all right. The head shape for this one is like a letter U. But it's also kind of square. Whereas when I felt like we were drawing the letter U for the body right here, we were very rounded. And then this letter U is kind of squarish. I think it adds to the silliness. Okay, now we're going to come down with a diagonal. Diagonal. So they're coming toward each other, those lines. And then we'll connect them. And it can be kind of straight across, but also maybe a little bit rounded. This is the bat's head, or a cat looks like a cat's head, doesn't it? Now, the silly part about this bat is it has a huge head and a very small body. So underneath the head, we're going to add a body. Again, I feel like we could be drawing a cat right now. And then the wings. Now, this time... They're smaller. So on this on this bat, the wings were so big, they were bigger than the whole body. But on this bat, the wings are kind of about the same size. They're a little bit smaller. Again, this is because this is more like a cartoon bat. But we're still coming from up here where I'm still going to call it the shoulders. Oops, sorry, I'm getting a little crooked, aren't I? And then we'll use that same trick, those same dot, 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 those same tricks to get those curves. I think they call it like a scalloped edge. To me, it's always just how I draw umbrellas. So it looks like an umbrella. A cat with two umbrellas. Oh, that's silly. All right. Now, underneath here, this picture shows very tiny little feet. Very tiny bat feet. You could make them more detailed if you want. I mean, you can put tennis shoes on your bat if you want. Who knows? It's your bat. And then one of the things that makes it so silly is it has a giant mouth which is really just going to copy the shape. So it's almost the exact same shape that we drew earlier, but instead of curving over, we're going to curve under. Now it has a super big smile. We'll put the little triangle teeth in there. And then this one actually shows its tongue or just like part of its tongue. Boy, if I stopped right now, it looks like it could be a Lego bat, doesn't it? Like this looks like a, a helmet, and those are the eyes, and that's his frown. But that's not how it's finishing. It's got eyes up here. I drew two curves over the top of two circles. You could draw your eyes however you want. I'm going to add a little bit of detail into the ears. And then we're at whatever else you want to do. If you want to put in some clouds, you can. If it's in the night, you could add a moon. Your bat is flying, or your bat might be hanging out with its bat brother. Or it's bat friend. Look at that, I put them together. Well, now I feel like this bat is no longer hanging, is it? Now it's standing. Oh, I should have thought about that. Because I could have turned the whole thing upside down. 
But I don't know. Does it make sense? Would the moon ever be below? Ooh, maybe if I put mountains down here. I don't know. I'm getting silly and strange now, you guys. Is it possible? Mm. All right. Well, I hope you had fun. You can keep drawing more bats if you want to. Again, the directions slides um, are on this video and um, are on the slideshow. So if you click through, I will put them up at the top. How about I'll make them, well, this video will be slide one and then the directions will be on slides two and three. I think that would work. Good to see you guys. I hope everything's well. Did I hear you guys are going back to school? You're going back before me? Have fun. Tell all the teachers hello for me, okay? All right, taking off. The bat video is ending, if I remember how to stop it. Pause, there we go.